What's going on, North students? Everyone having a good day? Hey, my name is Christian Bless. I'm the student pastor here at North Church, and I just want to welcome all of you guys. And this is your first time, or your first time in a long time. We are honored that you are here with us. Here at North Students, we believe that God created you on purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose. So we are so excited that you're here. Now, I hope that you came ready to hear from God. Good. Two people. I hope you are ready to hear from God. Come on. This is the thing because you got to have expectations to hear from God. Because if, where, where there is no expectation, God cannot do anything. So I don't know how many of you guys have a need in your life, but if you expect God to do something, he will do something. Amen? Maybe? Amen. All right. Rough crowd tonight, but we're going we're gonna to get going. <laughs> hey, um, we are on our very last week of summer season. I wasn't talking about the summer. I was talking about the, the series we are on. But it is true. Summer, it's almost over. Today is the last Wednesday of July. Anybody ready to go to school? Anybody ready to go see your friends? How many of you guys are like, you know what, I'm host, homeschool. I'm not going anywhere. How many of you guys are like, I'm ready to go see some people? Hey, it's going to be amazing. But tonight is the last night of summer season. In this whole past two months, we've been talking about spiritual disciplines and things that we need in our life to grow spiritually. Because the goal of every Christian, if you are here, and you are a Christian, if you believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world, you have given your life to him, your goal should be to be more like him every single day, to be less like you and more like Jesus. What I mean is to be a little bit less selfish every single day and be selfless like Jesus, to, to stop being prideful and be humble like he was. Come on. <laughs> Our goal is to be like Jesus as believers. So tonight, we're going to be talking about something that it will help us grow spiritually. But this doesn't mean that if you don't have this in your life, it doesn't mean that you're a bad Christian. It doesn't mean that, the, the, that God is going to love you more if you have this in your life or not. But it's also, it's something very important, whether you are a Christian or not, that you have a mentor in your life. Because mentors help you get closer to Jesus. So years ago, when I was 22 years old, I might have been 21, but I want to say 22 because it's, I was 22, I guess. I went to Norfolk, Virginia for four months to an internship at a church. Some of you guys have heard some of this story. Uh, I actually was living inside of the church. Imagine living in the church building for four months. Like literally when the band is practicing in Sunday morning early, you're there listening to them. You're like, oh, walk me up, the drummer. It was a great time. But this is the thing. When that pastor, they gave me the opportunity to do an internship in his church, he flew me into Norfolk, Virginia. This is a crazy thing. He sent me to Norfolk, Virginia. It was the largest church that they have. But his home church, the lead pastor, was in Pensacola, Florida. I was like, well, I don't know how this is going to work. He lives in a different state. But the, state, the first day that I got there, he flew in. And he took me to dinner. And after that, we went to the church. And he sat me across from him. And he said, hey, Christian, you're going to be here for four months. And he said something that it really blew my mind. He says, I want you to forget everything you know about church for the next four months. I want you to forget everything you know about the Holy Spirit. I grew up Pentecostal. We don't forget about the Holy Spirit. I'm like, you want me to forget what? He was like, listen, I want you to, this four months that you're here, forget everything you know and be a sponge in this place. Learn from us. 
Let me help you become the best pastor that you can be. He says, I want to mentor you, but if you don't allow me, I won't be able to make a, a difference and a change in your life. And I remember I was 22 years old, and I was like, okay, this is weird, but I'm already here. I don't have a car. I cannot drive back home. And my airplane ticket is not till April. And it was like January 3rd. And I was like, okay, let me say. And he, listen, for those four months while he was in town and even when he was in Pensacola, we were talking and he taught me so much about church during those times. And his advice to me was forget everything you know about church. What he was trying to get is like, don't let what you know be an obstacle for you to continue continue to learn. I also had a, a, a coach that was a mentor in my life. Uh, I used to play basketball back in the day. And I was really fast. And my coach, and it was my mentor, told me this. Your strength is how fast you are. But it's also your weakness. Because when you get too fast, like you are too fast sometimes for the ball. And you get yourself in trouble. And he was helping me and mentoring me how to be a good point guard. And I remember that I had to forget everything I knew about playing basketball to learn from the best that I had and be a good basketball player. Now, you know where I never had a mentor in my life and I didn't let people to talk to me? It was about relationships. Yep. I made a lot of mistakes in the relationships because I didn't have somebody who would speak the truth in my life when it came to relationships. And sometimes when people spoke truth, I walked away from it. And because of it, I experienced pain. Now, how many areas in your life have you made bad decisions because you didn't have somebody who walked you through them, a mentor in your life? Because we all need a mentor. Now, what we're talking about here right now is a spiritual mentor. Somebody who can help you get closer to Jesus. So let's read the definition of what a mentor is. Very simple. It's going to be on the screen. A mentor is an experienced and trusted advisor. It's an experienced and trusted advisor. Experience. Somebody who has lived longer than you have. Now, it doesn't have to be an old person, but it has to be someone who in that area of the, your life that you need help that he has or she has experience on. And when we're talking about spiritual mentor, it's somebody who has walked with the Lord for a while that can teach you what you can do to continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus. We all need mentors. And in the areas of my life that I made a lot of mistakes is because I didn't allow people to speak into it. One of the things that we need to do when we need a mentor is humble ourselves. And we need to ask for help. Because let me tell you something. If you are the ones making all of the decisions in your life and you don't have anybody speaking to you, you will experience a lot more pain than people that have mentors in their life. That's a decision that you make. I talk, it's, it's an experience, somebody who has lived a little or had experience in that specific subject. Right now we're talking about spiritual. I also said it's an advisor, somebody who is in communication with you. So in the areas of your life that you need growth, you need to be able to speak that to that person, to that mentor. Because mentorship and accountability is great as long as you put effort into it. Your mentors need to know what are your weaknesses, what area of your life and your walk with God you need help with, so they can help you and they can pray with you. Now, in the Bible, there is an incredible story about a mentor. It's going to be in the book of Samuel. First Samuel, if you have a Bible, you want to go to it, First Samuel, we're going to be in chapter 3. And let me tell you what is happening in this story. There is a woman on chapter 1 named Hannah. Say, Hannah. Hannah. Now, Hannah had no children. And actually, I was doing some studies, 
in this passage this week, and it said that the Lord stopped her from having children. The Lord did it. But she went to the house of God and prayed and begged the Lord and pleaded to the Lord. And he said, Lord, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you to serve you. And the Lord gave Hannah a son. She named him Samuel. Samuel becomes one of the major prophets in the Old Testament. So in chapter 3, where we are in the story, we're going to be in verse 9. And what's happening up to this point, she gave the baby to Eli. Eli was the priest. Modern day, he was a pastor. She gives Samuel to Eli when, Eli was, when Samuel was about three years old. After he was a baby that could eat solid food and could walk, she took him to Eli. And the Bible says that Samuel grew up in the house of the Lord. He learned everything from Eli. Samuel learned the law from Eli, learned how to serve through Eli. Eli was Samuel's mentor for many years. Now, right before we pick up in the story, Samuel, it's in his bed. I don't know what he's doing. He's in the temple. And it says that he heard a voice that said, Samuel, Samuel. So Samuel got out of the bed, went to Eli's room and says, did, did you call me? W what do you need? Now, Eli was old. Eli was almost blind. He couldn't see. And he goes like, boy, I did not call you. I'm trying to go to bed. Go back to bed. So Samuel goes back to bed and goes like, I promise. Like, I, I heard a voice that said my name. Again, Samuel, Samuel. He says, I guess Eli called me. He goes to Eli. Lord, did, did you call me? Did you? And Eli says, no, I did not. Go back to bed. Samuel goes back to bed a third time. Samuel, Samuel, he goes, get out of bed, goes to Eli, did you call me? And immediately Eli knew this is the Lord calling on Eli, on Samuel. He says, verse 9, we're going to read together, so I need your help. Verse 9, so he said to Samuel, go and lay down again, and if someone calls again, Say, See, Lord. your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed a fourth time. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, as soon as Samuel responded, says, speak to me, Lord, I'm listening. The Bible says, then the Lord spoke to Samuel, says, I am about to do a shocking thing in Israel. The story goes on, and he tells Samuel what he's going to do with Israel. But what I want you to see in this particular scripture, it's how Eli helped Samuel hear the voice of God. Because we need mentors, spiritual mentors in our life that help us hear the voice of God. T.D. Jake said it this way. If you don't know who T.D. Jake is, that's totally okay. He's a great preacher. You want to listen to him, go listen to him. T.D. Jake said that a lot of times the voice of God sounds like the voice of our mentor. This is why we need mentors in our life, spiritual mentors that help us discern what is from God and what is not from God. Spiritual mentors are important because mentors help us distinguish the sound of man or the sound of God. Mentors can help you to grow spiritually. So what you and I need to do in order to continue to grow spiritually. Now, again, this is not, if you don't have a mentor in your life, does not mean that you're not going to grow spiritually. 
But a mentor will be intentionally helping you grow spiritually. Now, at church, you know, you have small group leaders, you have people around you that want you to win. They want you to win spiritually. They want you to get closer to Jesus. That's what we're here. We believe in you so much that we have given some time to help you hear the voice of God. To help you determine what is God is telling you to do right now. Now, so the question is, so here's my sermon in a sentence. Pretty simple. I want you to say it with me. It's going to be on the screen. My sermon in a sentence is that mentors help us grow. Say it again. Mentors help us grow. They are not God in our lives. They are not, it's not that, hey, what do I need to do? Tell me what to do. No, 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 no. They help you hear from God. They help you get closer to God. So you go from hearing the voice of man to hearing really what God is saying to you in your life. So how do we choose a mentor? Remember, the mentors helps you grow, help you grow spiritually. Do you want to grow spiritually? A lot of the times we come to church because it's just a thing to do on Wednesday night. I come here because my parents dropped me off. My friends are there, so I guess we're going to go. The goal of coming to church, whether it's on a Wednesday or a Sunday or any day, is to grow spiritually. To grow closer to Jesus. Yes, it is fun. We see people. But our goal should be to be more like him. That's what mentors are in our lives. So how do we choose a mentor for our lives? The first thing that you need to do is to pray. Pray and ask God to reveal to you who that person should be in your life. This is not the first person that you think about. This is not the, it necessarily has to be your small group leader. This is someone whose relationship with Jesus you admire. So you need to go to God and ask God, show to me Who could be the best mentor for my life that can help me grow closer in a relationship with you? Just humbling yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, who is that person in my life? Because God will show you who that person is in your life. Men, we need to find our mentors. Our mentors don't need to find us. So you need to see Whether it's here at church, it might be somebody else that you know, a family member. And you got to pray, Lord, show me who that person is. Give me favor with that person. So when I ask, which is the second thing you need to do, you need to ask this person, would you mentor me? Would you teach me more about God? Remember that as believers, our goal is to be more like Jesus. We are called to be a disciple and to make disciples. So you got to ask when you see that person and you feel like, okay, it would be Susie or it would be Jimmy. You go to them and ask them, would you mentor me? But this is something you need to understand. When we're asking somebody to mentor us, it's not our own time. It's at their time. We need to be humble and say, I will make whatever works for you. It's never like, you know what? I want you to be my mentor, but I cannot do it this day. I have this on this day. And you know what? Uh, I can do a Zoom call once every three months. You got to know if you really want to grow and put that time and be intentional about growing spiritually with a mentor. You got to pray, ask the Lord. You got to ask the person Would you mentor me? I would work in your time. Now, there might be people that you think, oh, this is, this is going to be the right person for me. And you go ask and they don't have time for you. That does not mean that they don't love you. And if you get offended, that means that you're, in, you're insecure. 
and you think that everything should go how you want. There's going to be people that don't have time for you, and that's okay. And if somebody says no, you go pray again. Lord, who could that person be? And you go ask, would you mentor me? I will work on your time. I want to grow spiritually. And I see your relationship with God, and I want that for my life. Would you teach me? Would you mentor me? Would you disciple me? It takes humility. Now, the third thing that you need to do is to commit. After you pray, you ask, and they say yes. You got to commit to your mentor. We're going to meet once a month. Okay, I will be there every... That, we're going to be once a week. I will be there early. I'm going to be a good student. You got to commit. Because a lot of times we want something, but we don't want to put any effort or time. And then we just start blaming people. They just didn't have time for me. No, they had time for you. You just didn't have time for them. You have no idea how many times I hear young people... Young adults and even older people who say, oh, they just don't have time for me. No, they gave you three different times and you said that you were busy at all times. Mentors will help you grow spiritually. You got to honor them. You got to treat them with respect. You got to respect their time. You got to respect, if they give you homework to do, it means you got to do it. And I know this message is not for everyone. It should be. But I know some of you guys are going to hear this and you're not going to do anything about it. Some of you will. And my hope is that all of you guys prayed, ask, and commit. Okay, we said in the beginning that God created you on purpose with a purpose for a purpose. I say this every single week. And I don't say this just to say it. I say it because I believe in you. I believe that God created you on purpose. You have a purpose. God created you for a purpose. God gives you that. A mentor can help you get closer to that. It doesn't mean that they're God. It doesn't mean that if you don't have one, you will never fulfill your purpose. That's not what I'm saying. But it's one of the things that you and I can do to be intentional about growing spiritually. I don't know about you. But I want to be a better Christian every single day. And that means that I have to be less like me and more like Jesus. That when I want to flip on someone, I just say, Lord, thank you. Because you call me to love my enemies. Mentors will help you. I want you to pray about this. Think about it. Remember that you might ask people and they might say no, and that's okay. Move on. Keep seeking for that. Here at North Church, we do men's discipleship programs, women's discipleship programs. I want you to be looking out for those when they come available and take advantage of that. Have somebody in your life that walks alongside with you. Remember that a mentor is not your friend. It has to be someone who calls you on your crap. You've been disrespectful. You're being prideful. You don't want someone that is just clapping and applauding everything that you're doing. People like that, I don't need them in my life. I need people who say, Christian, what you said that was wrong. You got to go and ask for forgiveness. You have to go say that you're sorry. Helping me grow to be more like Jesus. Would you stand on your feet with me? Uh, I want to pray with you. We're about to go into small groups. Samuel needed Eli to learn how to discern the voice of God. With every head bow and every eye closed. If you're here tonight, you say, Pastor Christian, I need you to pray because I need a mentor in my life. I need somebody that walks alongside with me so I can continue to grow. If that person is you, nobody looking around, would you raise your hand because I want to pray with you. Raise your hand. I see your hands. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you because you send your Holy Spirit to be with us.
to guide us. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to show us who to ask to mentor us. Father, we know that all of the students have a purpose. And we want to come alongside them to help them become who you created them to be. But I pray that if there is pride in our students or leaders, Lord, that you break down those walls. And that we humble ourselves before you. And we say, I need help. I need help in this area. Father, thank you because you gave your son to die on a cross for us. For our sins, Lord. And because of it, we have freedom. We have salvation, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen.